So in the first part of this workshop, we're going to uh, prepare an interesting ground or background for our page. And here's one I made earlier. This one is now dry. So I'm going to show you how to do that using no uh, art materials whatsoever, just three basic ingredients that everybody I'm sure will have in their kitchen. So we have some coffee granules, uh, a tea bag, which actually also has some coffee um, dissolved into it as well, just to make the colour a little bit stronger, and some normal table salt. Okay, so let's get started. What I'm going to do is uh, work onto the next available page in my sketchbook, which happens to be on the other side of the collage that we were working on last time. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is not least because it's the next page in my sketchbook, but also because I actually cut into the pages as I suggested you did in your collage. And I actually quite like that. I think it just makes for a more interesting page. So I'm happy to see what happens with that. And let's just hope I don't spill tea and coffee all over the other pages. Okay, so um, one of the reasons I use a tea bag is because unlike just dissolving coffee, you'd still need some form of brush uh, to apply it with, but the tea bag itself is your tool. So what you need to do is find some sort of little pot, um, dissolve, put a few coffee granules into it first, then a tea bag, pour some boiling hot water on and leave it, put a bit of cold water in and then come back to it. So don't use it when it's boiling hot for obvious reasons. So yeah, this then becomes your paintbrush, which is great. And you can also drop it and it creates little splashes, which is quite nice as well. So I'm going to just cover the ground. I'm gonna throw it at the page, let out some of that, oops. You might wanna put some newspaper down if you're working somewhere that perhaps you shouldn't get messy. Um, yeah, get, let some of that lockdown kind of frustration out. Then I'm gonna take my coffee granules and just sprinkle a few over the page. That was maybe a bit more than I'd anticipated, but never mind. Um, the thing about these coffee granules, I seem to have very chunky ones. So you might find that your whatever you've got in the kitchen cupboard is perhaps a little bit um, smaller, and I think that might be a little bit better because this is quite domineering now, but never mind. So what I'm going to do here as well, just to try and fuse it to the page, is I'm dabbing uh, a little bit more of my tea bag onto the top of it. And then what I'm going to do is shake my salt. And just put some, let, some, some granules of salt. And that should just make for a slightly interesting texture. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, use my hair dryer to, uh, to dry it a little bit more quickly. Now if you don't want to do that, you can just leave it but it'll probably take a good half an hour or so to dry. If you're just going to leave it, a top tip, just to make it a little bit more interesting, is to tip your page, and then you can get these drips that start to come. Now, before we do that, what I also suggest is getting a piece of kitchen towel or a cloth or some newspaper and putting that down underneath, and then you can do that. Okay, and then you get these quite interesting drips forming. But if you do it with a uh, hairdryer, which I'm about to go and do, what you'll find with a hairdryer is when you're blowing on the surface, you can actually blow the tea and the coffee into all sorts of different directions. Um, so if you, if you bring your hairdryer down low and blow across the page, it will sort of move it around and that will make for some interesting patterns. Okay, I'll go and do that and then I'll be right back. background is dry. It's got a really interesting texture, lots of lumps of coffee, it's got a half shiny, half matte look, got salt that's fused itself onto the surface, it's almost got like a sandpaper effect, and then we've got all these amazing veins and uh, sort of, you know, explosions of tea and coffee, which I love. What we're going to do now is we're going to draw onto the background some typography. 
And typography was a very important part of the Dada movement. And in particular, typography that was uh, collaged. So the idea being that it appeared uh, that it was all from cut from different uh, printed uh, lettering. And so what I've done is I've found some letters that I'm now going to draw into my uh, background here. And some of you may know the significance of MMXX. Um, I'll give you a moment to think about it. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with Roman numerals, um, but MMXX is actually the Roman numeral for 2020. Now you have a choice here. You can choose to follow along exactly with my demonstration and use the MMXX on your piece. Uh, you will then be able to personalize it as you go along. Or if you prefer to, you can um, choose a word that you think really defines and sums up your 2020 and you can you can draw that into your page instead but you must you must find typography and print it or either have it on screen or print it in order to draw from okay so we're not making up anything we're either following along with this one or we're going to find our own words either collaged from a magazine first of all and draw from that or uh, put something together on the computer and draw from the screen. It's really important that we draw from a reference because lettering and typography is one of those things that I think you can really tell whether or not it's been uh, properly drawn from a reference letter or whether it's been made up and we don't want to be making anything up. So I'm going to start uh, drawing out um, my letters and I'm going to start with this M here. And um, in terms of the scale and the positioning, I'm not worried too much about the relationship with each other. But with each letter I draw, I'm really concerned to try and uh, represent it as accurately as, as I can. Now, I've got all sorts of stuff going on here that I've got to work over. And that's part of the, the fun and enjoyment of it. And what, what you might want to do is very lightly with a pencil. And you will want to do this lightly because you've already got a background. It's going to be really hard to rub things out without seeing them but you may well wish to very lightly draw yourself uh, a, a box which is going to sort of enable you to work inside that space there and then that's very light you can probably barely see it on the camera but that's purposeful okay so that box will, uh, will just give you some sort of guidelines to work from and I'm going to start from the top left OK, and then I'm going to sort of split uh, my box in half because roughly I know that the, the bottom of the M is going to come down to the bottom point there. So that's a good place to start. And then I'm going to draw a diagonal going up and then another diagonal parallel to that. So I'll try and draw. You can hear the battle that my pencil is having with the... Uh, with the coffee and all sorts. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. It's very, very faint, but you can, I'm sure, follow it along somehow. Now we can go over this with pen at a later point. So we will we will try and bring it to life a bit. So don't worry at all if you can't see it too well. Now, what we have is this wonderful serif here. Now, a serif font is a traditional looking font that has these little feet, okay, that kick out. Um, traditionally, they were put onto letters when they were being chiseled from stone, because that's how originally we started to uh, record lettering before the printing press was invented, you would put a little ending on to stop the stone from continuing to crack in that direction. So it was a way of keeping a lid on it, if you like. And then latterly, when these were made of metal and they were punched or, uh, into, or inked and then the paper was uh, rolled over the top of it, again, you wouldn't want anything that was just left too sharp on the ends because that could pierce the paper. So there was actually a technical reason why we had these um, serifs. It's a French word, okay? Um, this is a sans serif font, which is without serif. And you can see it doesn't have the serifs at the top. This is a very modern looking font because once we started to work on computer um, generated type 
and printing, digital printing, we no longer really needed them, so you have more modern, slick looking. But plenty still keep their serifs because it's just really a style choice. Hopefully, whilst I've been nattering away about my enthusiasm of typography, and I am sorry, but I could talk forever about it, hopefully you've seen what I've done here and you've followed along. If you haven't, let me just explain. Just under that serif there, where it curves, I've identified where this part of the M, this uh, leg, if you like, of the M comes down, and I've drawn that in, and then I've drawn my serif, and again, it's all in line with this original uh, boundary that I set myself. So then we're going to work our way back up to this corner. So let's mirror this angle so that it's uh, fairly symmetrical. Not all lettering is, is symmetrical, of course. And what you'll notice here is, in fact, we have to probably just change this, so it's not quite symmetrical, is that this, this one is, is much um, thinner, okay? So we mustn't do it exactly the same on both sides. This one is much thinner, like so. But we still do have our serif that kicks out. And then we have our thicker M here. So if you've decided you're going to have your own word, then it's still important to just watch this demonstration on how to approach drawing typography as accurately as possible and then once you've got the gist of it after a couple of letters then by all means pause the video go and find the letters that you're going to work with okay so we've got the pencil outline at least of our first m there now to just be really da da esque i'm actually going to draw on the boundary so the, the actual paper that it's cut from, like so, just to give it that, that impression that it's been cut out and that it is inspired by Dada. And I might well work around that border as well. Okay, so I've got my first M drawn in there. Um, okay, let's move on to the second M. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to draw... First of all, uh, a boundary for the actual paper itself. And then inside that, just going to mark a line across the top and a line just coming in from the bottom where the bottom and the top should line up. I need to sharpen my pencil because the coffee has, and the, and the uh, salt actually has blunted it. So let me just do that. Oh. Okay. And this one is very much symmetrical. It's identical on both sides. I'm going to put a line down the middle there. Okay. And it also has angled sides to it. So we're going to draw the angled sides in first, come down to this point. We're going to mirror that exactly the same on the other side. Come down to this point, like so. And then we're going to have a small space at the top. We're going to come in like a V shape. Again, symmetrical on both sides, like so. And then this, I mean, this is a much easier uh, M to draw because everything is uniform. It's a sans serif font that is symmetrical. So that's our M there. It's a little bit squat compared to the actual original. If we want to be really precise we can make some adjustments and some changes but I'm fairly happy with how that is for now. Right let's get the X in. I'm gonna I'm going to maybe move my X just slightly, just so, because I've realised I'm running out of space here, so I'm actually going to move it across like that. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't stick down the, um, the collage, because I just thought I might well need to do that. I might need to move it around. Okay, so I've got my box 
for the outside of my X. Now this is a very unusual X. It is not, it doesn't line up. I'm not sure if you can see that. So we are going to try and try and represent it as accurately as we can. So just put a small mark here and here, and that will show you the distance from the top here. And then we're going to come down towards the center. Again, if you wish to, you can do a guide and draw it at the center line. And you could also, I would recommend doing a horizontal center line there as well, like so. And just sort of with this head towards the middle, roughly like that, and on the other side of it as well, like so. And then go back up. So we've got a V shape. Like that and you'll see because it doesn't line up it's going to look a bit odd but it is correct that we're going to go let's mark our feet first there we go we're going to go down not quite lined up with where the top line was like so and then this one is higher up than this line so it's got a sort of step in it like so There we go. That's that X. And then we've got a tiny little X because I couldn't find a bigger one. The joy of collage, you spend a lot of time just flicking through magazines and newspapers, not necessarily finding what you want half the time. So it can be quite a slow process, although people think it's, you know, it's easy and anyone can do it and, uh, you know, it's because you're not drawing anything. It actually can be a really slow process just trying to select the, the images that you want. Okay, so I'm working in almost the exact same way as I did with the big X here. I started from the top, I gave myself a line, lined it up. This one is lined up, so it's a bit easier to draw. I can go all the way through if I want to, like so. Like that. Right, okay, so that's the stage where we've got just the pencil outline of our lettering. Right, the next stage is we're just going to take an ordinary pen, so you don't need anything more complicated than that. If you do have other uh, types of pens and materials, then fantastic, by all means, uh, introduce them. But this is supposed to be something that everyone can do uh, from home. Okay, so there's no reason why you can't take part in this. Okay, so I'm just using my rubber here. I don't really know how this will work. Just wondering if I could just reduce a bit of the darkness of the pencil. Did work a little bit, so if you want to do that, you can. So I'm going to use my biro pen and I'm going to start working into my drawing with my pen. Now, What I want us to do is now start to sort of really just be a bit more free and independent and sort of personalizing this, if you like. At the moment, I'm just going over the outlines quite strongly. Um, but what, what I'd like to do is remind you of the Jova collages we were looking at last time and remind you of the doodles that you've put into your own collage that can represent something uh, relevant about 2020. Okay, so whether it's sort of scientific uh, doodles that represents, you know, the virus, or whether it's perhaps things that are very much personal to you, how you spent your lockdown, you know, may maybe uh, maybe you spent too much of it on on the Xbox or whatever it is, and you could in introduce your Xbox logo, whatever it is. Okay, so what I'm doing here is, I'm, at, the, at the moment, I was just starting to outline where I'd drawn in my uh, lettering and I'm kind of rubbing back some of the pencil if I can once I'm, once I'm doing it. Okay. But I want you to try and um, use as many different types of mark making in this as you can. So what I'm going to do here is just do some stippling. Stippling is just when you use little dashes I suppose you could call them. I used to call them maggots to my year seven class when I was teaching them. 
I'm going to just do some stippling around this edge. And I'm just trying to show the texture and the tone for the background part of my letter. Like so. You do have to work quite firmly. Some of you might well have a, a Sharpie pen, which could work quite well for these thicker lines, outlines. Work over that. Use an eraser, rub it back a bit. What's nice about putting a background down that's quite random is you don't know you don't really know what's going to happen and how everything's going to react and respond. It's there is an element of of chance about it, which is which is really the most enjoyable part. And continue with my stippling. So I could do that for the entire M, or I might decide to change some of my pattern. And I just want to sort of look at, at pattern again, like we did in our last collage. Think about how perhaps we can start to use some of the incidental marks that we made in the background that weren't really intentional, but start to sort of work out from them. I'd like to bring in my molecular chemical pattern again still thinking about the virus thinking about our antibodies the chemical reactions that are taking place trying to visualize that somehow maybe up towards this edge maybe they don't all need to link some of them could but it can get a bit looser and a bit freer a little bit like um, branches branching out now what you'll remember from Jova's work and you can see here is that the the circle is very, very much a motif, so I'd quite like to revisit that. I might pop a little circle into this. I can't quite decide where I want to put it. I might put it there, actually. So I'm going to not draw the full circle in. You could use a baked bean tin. You can use a compass, whatever you want to try and create a circle, anything circular that you can draw around, like so, which is quite nice. And you'll remember we uh, the dashed lines were something that Jova used a lot. So you might, if you have a thicker pen, great. If not, use a thinner pen, it doesn't matter. You can start to work around Sometimes maybe go off track and follow the line of the uh, tea stain. Like so. This sort of circle also makes me think of looking at things in petri dishes uh, in a lab or under a microscope, which I think is very apt because you'll see we're fighting to develop our vaccines at the moment.
and on the process goes. And it's very much down to you really now to, to make it come to life, to have some fun. Brought back my favourite thing, Tip X. If you've not ever used it before, you can get it from any stationary, um, possibly even a, a just a convenience store or corner shop, perhaps. I'd sell it. Well, I'm going to keep playing and building into this, and then I'm going to come back and show you uh, how it how it's gone. I'm going to spend a good half an hour on this now, and then I'll show you what I've managed to do. So this is how my uh, piece of work, my typography piece looks now. I've spent a good bit of time on it. Um, I'll just talk you through some of the things that I've done. As you can see, I've outlined all the lettering. Some of them I've filled in completely. Others I've used cross hatching to have a sort of uh, more of a mid-tone and a texture. And I've actually purposefully left gaps along the edge of where the stain is. So I'm trying to work with the background as well. This one I created a, a wavy uh, pattern, something that I saw in one of Jova's pieces, and then I thought maybe it could look like a little road. Maybe it's something to do with our sort of path to getting back to nearly normal or new normal, I should say. Added a few arrows in here and an, a, our friendly little non friendly virus um, icon here. And then what I noticed is where these um, tea stains and coffee stains had branched out, uh, where I used the hairdryer on them, they looked like the, the bronchial passageways of the lungs. And so I thought I could draw a pair of lungs around that and really sort of make use of, of this, that happy accident. I could spend hours and hours more on this. Um, I'll put the arrow in here. This sort of represents the kind of two waves that we've gone through. Um, yeah, I could just keep going and you can keep going with yours. Next, what I might want to do is look back in my sketchbook at... Um, the drawings that I did as part of my mind map, perhaps you chose to draw the mask or maybe you chose the syringe, uh, whatever it was that you chose to draw there, you may well want to replicate into your drawing. You could draw that in in Biro, um, or you might find, you know, perhaps there's some things in your collage that you really enjoy doing, that you think have worked well, that you want to then copy across. It could even be parts of the headlines from your collage that you could use the same sort of techniques that I did to copy across into this typography piece. Mm.